we're going to segment to the topic uh, that we're going to talk about tonight, uh, Denzel, which is going to be um, debt to income ratio, which is your personal ratio of debt and um, uh, debt service coverage ratio, which is how much debt do, does your income allow you to service. This is how lenders, uh, this is, these are the algorithms that lenders look at to determine if you're qualified and it, how much they're gonna lend you. So you can have 850 credit and you can have excellent income, but if your expenses are too high, your debt to income ratio is gonna be low. Therefore your debt service coverage ratio, how much debt you can service is not gonna be strong enough for you to be able to get a large loan. So you might be making a million dollars in your business, but if you're showing losses or you're only showing a gain or, or a profit at the end of the year of $30,000, then you're not gonna be able to get a $100,000 loan because your debt service coverage ratio is not gonna substantiate that um, on the business. Um, so these two um, acronyms, DTI, debt to income ratio and DSCR, debt service coverage ratio, are actually used both in personal lending and in business lending. Um, the only difference is on the personal side, they're looking at your personal income versus your personal debt. And on the business side, they're looking at the business revenue versus the business debt. So um, I'd like to kind of go into that a little bit. If you want to pull up the, the, the whiteboard, Denzel. So we got debt to income and debt service and coverage ratio. They both uh, are in sync yes. with, each with each other. Correct. Okay. So just some like technical language about it. So DTI, debt to income, is a personal finance measure that compares the amount of debt that you owe uh, I'm sorry, the, the amount of debt you have to your overall income. Lenders, including issuers of mortgages, use it as a way to measure your ability to manage the payments that you make each month and repay the money you have borrowed, okay? Um, so understanding your debt to income ratio, a low debt to income ratio demonstrates a good balance between your debt and your income. So in general, the lower the percentage, the better the chance you'll be able to get the loan or the line of credit that you want, right? Um, on, the, on the contrary, the higher the debt to income ratio signals that you may have too much debt for your income and therefore the lenders view this as a signal that you would, would not be able to service the debt. So before I continue, this is one of the reasons business credit is important because once you're able to start getting funding on your business credit, and you're able to move your debt away from your personal credit because debt is good if you're using it and leveraging. But if you can move that debt onto your business credit versus your personal side, then your personal debt to income ratio is going to be lowered because you're not carrying debt on the personal. You still have the debt. It's on the business side and your personal liability and your personal debt is going to be reduced. So therefore your personal DTI is going to be a lot stronger, which is going to give you the ability to get much bigger personal loans when you do need to apply for a mortgage or if you are looking for any type of lending on the personal side. So this is one of the benefits, kind of positive side effects of building business credit is that your personal debt to income can be reduced if you're strategic in transferring, moving over debt off of your personal to the business side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Appreciate okay. it. Um, so, for example, you know, let's assume you have a twelve uh, dollars per month mortgage, uh, four hundred dollars for your car, and four hundred dollars for the rest of your debts each month. Um, your monthly debt payments would be as follows: it would be two thousand, right? If your gross income for the month is six thousand, your debt to income ratio would be thirty three percent. Okay, so right. So write, you take. Let me write that out. So we've got mm -hmm. twelve hundred a month for. Mortgage, mortgage, four hundred for a car payment, mm -hmm. and then another, and then another four hundred for other debt. debts. Yeah, just keep it simple. So we got two thousand a month total that's going to debt. Correct. And what is this uh, person's income? Um, or does that not matter? 
in this example? No, it does. So, hold on. Yeah, so the gross income in this scenario is 6000 A month? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you take the 2000 Yeah. You divide it by 6000 and that gives you 0.33 or 33% debt to income ratio. Okay, so DTI is 33%. And this is not bad, right? No, that's not horrible. Um, typically for mortgages, uh, they're looking at around 30, 35% is what they look for. Okay. Um, and uh, for other loans, they look for, for less. So personal lines of credit, you probably need to be under 30%. Now, when I say 30%, you know, that's walking the line really thin, right? And I personally don't like um, moving in that space where you're just kind of in that 50-50 chance. So I'd recommend being under 30% or striving towards it. Yeah. Now, just kind of on another factor, if your gross income just was 5,000 with the same amount of debt, then you'd be at 40% DTI. So now you're a lot higher. It's gonna be a lot harder to get approved. So with 5K income, same numbers, 2K mm -hmm. going to debt, the other 3,000 would be Correct. maybe cash flow or other expenses, um, I'd be at you know, a DTI of 40. Right. Got it. And that would be pushing it at that point, probably not likely to get approved. Well, well it depends. Like on a mortgage, sometimes they'll go up to like 40, 43. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yes, you're pushing it. Got it. Okay, so that's, that's debt to income. Um, obviously there's two ways to reduce it you, to lower your DTI. One is to increase your income and the other one is to reduce your debt or both at the same time or both at the same time. <laughs> All right. We implement some velocity banking, maybe debt snowball to get things going. Um, you know, if we can't do velocity banking, if we don't have a debt tool, um, then we naturally, we just rely on debt snowball for that period of time. And then, you know, eventually upgrading, getting the, getting the credit up, bringing the DTI down, then applying at the right moment in time, you know, so that's, that's good. Right. I appreciate that. Perfect. All right. Now let's get into the debt service coverage ratio. Okay. And, and this is, this is where I, I see, I, I see, unfortunately, a lot of business owners, um, they, they, they fail or fall or they're not planning ahead because as business owners, as people, we want to save money on taxes, right? And as business owners, obviously most accounting experts are going to try to help you save as much as they can on taxes by writing off all of your business expenses. That's great. I want to do the same thing. However, if you have a good accounting person who understands business and funding, they, they should ask you the question, this year, what are your plans? Do you plan on applying for a major loan, a, 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 a mortgage if it's personal, or expanding your business and going for something like an SBA loan? Are you looking to you know, take on a good uh, debt tool that you can use to leverage in your life, personally or in your business? And if the answer is yes to that, then based on the revenue, you may not need to, or you may need to be careful on how much uh, deductions you're taking, because if you're not showing profits and you're not able to, if your debt service coverage ratio is not strong enough, then you're either just not going to get qualified, you're going to get declined, or if you're looking for a substantial amount of funding, you may only be able to qualify for a very small amount because your, your debt service coverage ratio is not sufficient. So you have to think about that um, and don't just, you know, go with the flow of, uh, you know, I'm going to save money and taxes as much as possible by writing off everything. Again, if you make enough revenue to do that, then do it. 
And if you're not planning on applying for any loans for expanding or growing your business, then continue to do that. But if you're planning on getting into um, you know, debt for leveraging on a major loan, you, you need to reconsider that and what you're gonna, how you're gonna prepare your, 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 your numbers on your accounting side so that you can show that your business is profitable. That makes sense? Yeah, so showing more profit will improve my debt servicing coverage ratio. Right. Exactly. If exactly. I so, um, so the you know technically, so the debt service coverage ratio applies to corporate, government, and personal finance. In the context of corporate finance, the debt service co coverage ratio is a measure of a firm's available cash flow to pay current debt obli obligations. So your, your DSCR is going to show an investor or a bank or a lender whether your company has enough income to pay its debts. Simple as that. Okay, so how do we figure that out? You basically take your net operating income and you divide that by your total debt service. The net operating income is going to be a company's revenue minus certain operating expenses. So net revenue. Not including taxes and interest payments. Right. So net revenue minus operating expense. Yeah. So to get to your net operating income, it's basically your revenue minus um, operating expenses. Um, you don't take out taxes and interest payments. You could leave that in there okay. to get to your net operating income. NOI for short, right? Yeah. It's basically, yeah, the earnings before interest and tax. Got it. Earnings before interest and tax. Everything has an acronym. EBIT. EBIT. Cool. Mm -hmm. So that's your net operating income. And you divide that by your total debt service. So I'm going to try and figure out my NOI just for obviously to help people figure that, figure this out for themselves. How would they go about doing that? So you'd obviously have to go back to your your bank statements, right? You look at the whole entire year. The the NOI is something that you can either pull three months into a year, six months into a year, or at the end of the year, right? Right. It depends on how you're doing your bookkeeping. Got it. Um, if you're doing it yourself and you know you're using a software like QuickBooks, that helps a lot. Or if uh, you have a, a an accounting firm helping you. Um, they should be able to provide you with that. And it basically show up on your P&L, your profit and loss statement. Got it. Got it. So looking at my, uh, my 2019 revenue was, so a total was 283. Mm -hmm. That was gross. So to get right. to, to get to the net operating income, which is earnings before, interest and in tax, um, I would basically uh, minus all of those um, quarterly tax payments that I that I make correct. Right. And then all correct. the and then all the um, federal tax payments that I take out of my salary. Right. So basically, just go back to your gross. And then take to make it easier, just go back to the gross total. Mm -hmm. And then just eliminate any operating expenses. That's good to know. Like your light, your phone. Yeah. You know, basic operating expenses. And then that gives you to your your profit as well? That gives you to your net operating income. After. Your, uh, after the. After all yeah, the. Yeah, after the operating bills. expenses. Okay. It's good stuff. Cool. I'll definitely, I'm definitely going to look into this myself um, just so that I can be uh, in line because you never know when an opportunity is going to strike in your business. You get in front of a millionaire, you get in front of a, uh, you know, a six, seven, eight, nine figure earner. And they ask you these questions because they're genuinely interested in your business and possibly even investing in your business. And if you don't have these numbers, if you don't know your numbers mm -hmm. in line in, in terms of the acronyms, because this is what, this is how rich people operate off these these different acronyms you know and, and i'm putting myself on the hot seat you know i don't i don't know my numbers when it comes to 
those acronyms, but at the same point, I'm not actively seeking investors. If I was seeking investors, people that are willing to invest in my company or my business, I'm willing to give up shares, I better know these numbers. Yeah. Um, or, or anything outside of about, estimated, I think, should be, is literally BS to the investor. So if you, if you can't give, my net operating income is 72467 and 87 cents. You know, like if you can't be like that, anything outside of that right there is BS to them. They'll just shut you down, you know? And I, uh, I witnessed that um, recently with this, uh, this Clubhouse app, which is blowing up. So if you guys don't know about Clubhouse, it's a really great platform to be on right now. It's invite only. Um, so the way to get in is either you get invited or you know someone that has the app, you get inside and you can literally hop in rooms where there's multiple millionaires giving free advice right now, free coaching, um, even millionaires that are like investing in people's companies and businesses right on the spot, startup companies. It's, it's pretty insane. I was in a room with Grant Cardone and a bunch of other people and I seen people coming up and they were asking these questions. What's your DC, DSCR? And I didn't know what that was. I was like, what the hell is that? I know DTI. I don't know DSCR. And then they were like, what's your NOI? What's your SOP? What's your... And these people were like, uh, 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 it's about, I think we did, mm -hmm. we did 1.5 million. That's not a real number. It's either 1.5, you know, 1,525,047. You know, that's a more realistic number for them. You know, right. um, and it's funny how they'll, they'll eat you apart. Um, uh, so yeah. you better know your oh, numbers. Yeah. Just a little side we'll note. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but got to know your numbers, man. Important stuff. Well, let, let's, um, let's run just, uh, a, a, an illustration with, with, with some simple numbers that I already have prepped. And then, um, also make note that basically if your debt service coverage ratio is less than 1%, you're not getting anything. You're just not going to get approved for anything. Okay. Um, ideally, you need to be 1.25% or higher. Minimum. That's the minimum. Now, we're going to see how that translates right now. Okay. Okay. So, if you're, sorry. If you're, um, let's, uh, let's, okay. So, if, you're, if your revenue or your income is, uh, we're using a, these numbers as 2,150,000 a year. Okay. So, two so that's the, 100. that's a net, right? Net operating. So net operating income. Correct. Okay. Got that. Okay. Um, and your debt that you're servicing is 350,000 a year. So you take the two hundred to two million one hundred fifty thousand, divided by three hundred fifty thousand, and that's going to give you six point one four. That's six point one four percent debt service coverage ratio. You are good. You're solid. You're going to get pretty much what you're looking for. There's a lot more revenue than debt in that scenario. Got it. So the lower the number is like not good. No, the lower the number, it's that's how much debt you can you can cover. So your DTI is it's 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 a it's that's why it's a little confusing, and that's why I wanted to talk about it because your DTI is a ratio between um, your debt and your income. Your debt service coverage ratio is how much debt you can. It's the rate a percentage of how much more debt you can cover. Ah, got it. How much more debt you can take on? Correct. So what would this translate to? Well, how much could this person get more? In, in well, that's going to be vary from a, you know from bank to bank, lender to lender, and loan to loan, depending on what type of loan, the use of funds, huh? and so conservatively you know, but, speaking, what would you say? But yeah, conservatively speaking, someone in this situation would be a you know strong for you know five hundred to a million. Five hundred to a million, got it, and. So back to your example of being 1.25% or lower, 
that that, that person's basically um a, has too much debt. Correct? You know what? We could figure it out because let, let's let's see. If we take this scenario, Denzel, okay? Yeah. And we add a million dollars of debt into it, okay? And they're servicing that debt. Um, that's one thousand one million three hundred fifty thousand now. Okay. Right. So now if we do the same algorithm, the same, you know, what what's our what's our result? So that's two million one hundred fifty thousand. Right? Divided by one point three five zero. They're at one point five nine. So they're they can service the debt. They're over one point two five. They can service the debt. The bank would, would, would issue that loan. For an additional yeah. Uh, obviously not five, not another, not another five hundred k, but maybe it would be a little bit less, right? Oh, that was putting a million on top of the three fifty. The there by when you put the million on top of the three fifty, they would still be at one point five nine or one point almost one point six. Ah, got it. Percent got it. debt service coverage ratio. So they would be a, their revenue would be able to service the debt comfortably. Okay, right. So if they were to acquire an additional 1 million of debt, that would be fine. But what if they already have coming into it, they've got 1.35 million of debt and they're looking for more? A bank would they're, say- They're, they're, they're them because now they're already at 1.6 uh, debt service coverage ratio and most lenders are not gonna go you know, conservatively, especially now, they're not gonna go under 1.5. Got it. So the, the rule of thumb is like 1% is the, is the bottom, but I don't think any lender is really going that low, especially now, you know, with COVID and just how conservative banks and lenders are being, they, they want to see that you're strong and you can service the debt. Right. In the current environment. So below 1.5, right. I'll go. Yeah. Again, these are, you know, the, the, these, what, these are not hard numbers because every lender is unique and different and every loan type is unique and different but generally speaking this is what we're looking at got it very and of course there's other variables that might come into the situation such as collateral right mm -hmm. um the relationship and rapport that you have with that bank if you've been banking with them right and they they hold your your, your checking account and they see how you perform they may take a little extra risk on you versus if it's a brand new bank you've never worked with before. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's all these other components, your credit, personal and business credit, right? You have great, excellent personal credit, but you have no business credit. It's not necessarily going to decline you, but it's not going to, you're not, it's not helping you where if you had the business credit, it's helping you. And if you had personal credit, let, let's say that the, the same scenario with these same numbers, you know, their credits bordering and teetering on 700 with recent late payments in the last three years. Well, as good as the debt service coverage ratio is, um, that, that weakness on the credit, is, it could be an issue there. So all of the components need to come together. You know, the personal credit, the business credit, debt service coverage ratio. Um, if, if there's collateral to work with, you don't necessarily want to bring collateral out up front and offer it. But if you have it, you know, you, you need to know whether or not you're willing to put it on the table. Because that could be the difference. I've seen people get approved for a $50,000 personal line of credit because they own their car outright, $10,000 car, and they got declined, but they, uh, they offered the car as collateral and the bank said, okay, we'll go ahead and give you the 50,000. 